Hi everyone, this is Build's Character, and I am joined today with Penelope Halfpint, who is played by the amazing Hope Lavelle. She's on Beyond Heroes, and we're going to make who? Penelope Halfpint! Yay! <laughs> uh so this should be really fun it's it's obviously one of my favorite characters of all time and i've spent a lot of time with this character uh it's uh, they are adorable and have a dark side somewhere um <laughs> <laughs> quite possibly so what, what what was your inspiration for penelope you know what penelope actually came from the very first game i ever played with fifth edition um with tj storm i made this character named penelope proudfoot and she was based off of Samwise Gamgee. So she was very much from the Lord of the Rings kind of era. And I just thought Samwise was that kind hearted, never giving up. You know, he was kind of the true hero of the story. And I just loved that, I don't know, personality. And that's where she came from. That definitely shines through in, in a big <laughs> way. And, yeah, that, that's a, and that's a hard character to play. I mean, that's, it, it definitely keeps people grounded to have mm -hmm. the heart of a party right the one person who's not corruptible necessarily <laughs> um also gets everyone into a little bit of trouble when you want to make friends with everyone. yeah <laughs> and, i try to be careful you no know, that's the best thing that's the best thing like that's i mean when everything is the the player's faults yeah <laughs> it's the best game in my opinion well i think it's really great that my party our party is just is so receiving of, of that kind of character and they never really get angry when she tries to do stuff like that <laughs> yeah yeah there's never a uh, punishment so no. I, w I went ahead and added your character art so you just go to collections you click my character um and i went ahead and made a, a penelope half pint uh little piece of art there so you just you go to your characters you hit create character and you're gonna edit and we're going to start uh, building Penelope Half Pint. Yay. In Edge, which is a slow browser. Oh. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> uh, is, there, is there an actual, is it just Half Pint or? Yeah, usually I put Half Pint in like quotation marks because it's just like, it's not a real name. It's a nickname. Right. It's not the last name. Yeah. Okay. I'm being terrible. I did the double quotes. <laughs> um, so obviously, uh, do you use any playtest material at all? I don't actually use any playtest. Okay. So yeah, if you wanted to, you would just click homebrew or critical role or playtest and all this other stuff that you can do. Um, actually, you do use some home. I mean, I think I gave you something. So I'm just going to put homebrew in there. Okay. It's hard to keep track these days. And we're going to move over to race. All and right. You are a halfling, right? I am a lightfoot halfling. Why did you choose the lightfoot? Because uh, it just fit with all without all the other halflings. She's she's bubbly. She's light. She's she hides easily. Mm -hmm. um, that halfling nimbleness, and also you just the the brave and the lucky. It just seemed to fit. They're very uh, kinder in description, you know. Yeah, exactly. Prone to wanderlust and everything yes, else. Yes, exactly. And you're you're naturally lucky. It's the edge. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So yeah, Penelope. Hey, you have an oh. advantage against being fried. Am I back yet? Yes, you are. Am I back? Yes. Yeah. So. You have an advantage on being frightened. I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, mm -hmm. You have. Well, you can be. You can get through tiny spaces. You're naturally stealthy. I can hide behind large things. <laughs> it's, it's an all important stuff to know. Yeah, I yeah. love the light light foot halfling. I think it's a really great uh, choice. And any roll that's a one is like you can just. You're lucky. You can re-roll ones. I mean, come on, guys. How cool yeah, is that? That is pretty. That is pretty. It's fantastic. almost broken. <laughs> It's almost broken, but not quite. Uh, but that, that, that makes a lot of sense. So we will choose this. And okay. Yeah, and so then even once you choose, you get to look at all your options. And sometimes you have, uh, you know, depending on what race you choose, you can have like different ability modifiers or different choices you can make after that. So, so class, I think we know who the, what the class is. <laughs> the druid class. What do, you, <laughs> what do you like about druids? Um, 
I think what I like most about druids is their wide range of abilities. You know, it's they're not just amazing in battle because they can just completely dominate the terrain, but you also have a lot of spells that you can use creatively outside of combat. Mm -hmm. You know, is stuff like as simple as like mold earth. You know, there's a lot of things you can do uh, with with that, or you know. Um, even just controlling the elements outside of combat can be really helpful to your par your party. Mold Earth is something I think a lot of people ignore the power of. Right? There's <laughs> nothing like, better than just dropping people into a hole. <laughs> exactly. Like you can create trenches, you can dig through underground. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot to be done there. Um, like if you if you see a dangerous part of the dungeon, just dig around it. Yeah. You know, like it's not that hard. It's always great to have a DM who who uh, who's really nice about letting me use Mold Earth in a lot of different ways. <laughs> I mean, it is it is one of those spells that is just, it should be as powerful as it is. Like that's like <laughs> the advantage to being a druid if you have the creativity to use Mold Earth in, in a satisfying way. Yeah, and that's the great thing about being a druid is it's it's really allowing you to be creative. Now, right now, you're pretty high level. Yes. So, what I'm level a, are you for? I'm a druid? level. 10 as a druid right um what were your initial would you say your skills here what was Let's, penelope have pine good at uh i okay i might have to pull this up because I, I need to remember <laughs> um where are we at we're at class mm -hmm. okay so are you just looking at proficiencies yeah yeah um, oh yeah, obviously she chose nature. Okay. And uh, survival. Oh wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I think uh, I think the reason I did that was because when we started in the Nintervale uh, so long ago, uh, Penelope had just left her village, mm. and uh, that's kind of how I felt like she she wanted to be able to survive on her own and, until she could find uh, a party or friends. Okay. She she had a lot of time alone. Until you ran into Keen Day of Prep. Until I went Keen Day of Prep <laughs> <laughs> and saved him. Uh, I think the backstory was uh, she saved him. He he had just come from the Feywild and he was eating berries that were oh, poisonous. That's right. yeah. And she helped him out and healed him, and they became best friends. <laughs> that was really cute. That was yeah. that was funny. Um, you what circle are you? Circle of the Land of Forest. Oh, you are. Okay. Yes, I know. You think that I would I picked I, uh, a yeah. moon, right? Yeah, because you know the big tanky, tanky <laughs> druid, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, that gets you a whole bunch of different spells, um, also. So that's always cool. Uh, circle spells. So that ends up giving Penelope. You've got hold person. Wait, no, that's Arctic. Ooh, that's creepy. <laughs> I haven't looked at this list in a while. Uh, so you get bark skin, spider climb, call lightning. You've certainly done that a few times. Plant yes. growth, divination, freedom of movement. Mm -hmm. uh, commune, commune with nature. With tree I love stride that one. is cool. I can't wait to use tree stride. I've been like trying to line it up every every once in a while. And I'm like, oh, we're surrounded by trees. And then I haven't gotten the chance yet. Oh, uh, no. It's yeah, so it's cool. A, yeah, it's a good jumping around. Uh, and divination. That's interesting that you have that. Mm -hmm. uh boy i've always wanted to play like an eco terrorist druid who is like destroys everything like every <laughs> building they see and then like cast plant growth right just incessantly like ruining like the civilization's day <laughs> i could get behind a character like that that's pretty <laughs> awesome <laughs> uh so very cool and what do you like about the forest domain is it just the spell list or just character I think it just was a character thing. You know, she comes from the forest. It just made sense. Yeah. And, well, we got a few ability score improvements here because you are very high level. <laughs> and you get bonus cantrip. Oh, where is that coming from? Yeah. I oh, do? yeah, so you've got, like, thorn whip. You've got all these options that you can choose from. You've definitely used infestation. Yes, I love that one. I can't believe it's a cantrip. God, that's na it's nasty. Yeah. 
I love it. I love especially because you, when you picture how it works, you know, you just like, you have to just take one insect or a flea, I think is what it is. Mm-hmm. And I always like to chuck it. And then as, as it hits the creature, it just erupts into a million like cre- like bugs. And then just to picture how it like goes underneath the creature and like, like moves oh, it in a random gross. direction. No. It's just so cool to picture. Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> like under their skin? <laughs> Like under their feet. Under their feet. Okay, like okay. imagine like, just some so many bugs. Horror. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so th- is that your bonus cantrip? Do you think? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, whoops. Okay, we got that done. Now we should go ahead and get the ability scores tidied up real quick. And before we do that, so let's go over to. We'll go come back here because then we need to choose your spells, which there will be many. Um you were standard array i believe yes standard array. Mm-hmm. and is wisdom your highest oh yes okay so we i assume that was a 15 in the yes. original score mm-hmm. what else um and then i think dexterity was next okay so like a 14 yeah i liked her just being able to move around quite easily yeah. um followed by constitution i actually chose oh wow okay yeah, I know. I'm trying to remember what my thinking was behind all this, but uh, I mean, you, you wanted to survive. In yeah, that's true. That was probably <laughs> it. <laughs> Survival's uh, pretty big. I think charisma was next. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Just trying to make her as charismatic as possible, but you know, halflings are very charismatic. So. Yeah. Um, and then strength. Was in what a ten? Ten. Oh wow! Okay, so she has she had got an eight in intelligence. Yes, she is oh, not that's smart. Adorable. I always say she's 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 not bright whatsoever, but she's got this age old wisdom about her. So she yeah. is very wise. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, it is impressive how many times like you've done the dangerous thing. Um, of like talking to like a monster and it's like worked out it works out sometimes it doesn't <laughs> always work out yeah <laughs> but like it, whether it works out or not she's gonna try it yeah and again i thank my party for letting me do that sort of stuff a, a compelling argument is a compelling argument <laughs> uh and then you have some ability modifiers did you ever choose feats or did you no i think increase? i only did ability modifiers i was trying to get those as high as possible. Okay, so so you wisdom, I assume, at fourth level. Did wisdom. Yeah. And constitution. I think and I was. Constitution. I think I was worried about dying. Really worried about dying. Well, that yeah, that's about the time I uh, was running. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then well, after that, at eighth level, you had the, the choice again. Yes, another ability. What did I do? I did ability score improvement. And this time I chose wisdom okay. and charisma. And charisma. Okay. Very well rounded. Mm-hmm. And at this point, you are pretty tough. Uh, natural recovery at level like I, I don't get I don't get to play druids. I really want to actually. I yes. would love to play druids. I would love to see you play a druid. What what would be your what would your druid be like? Oh, the eco terrorists for oh, sure. Oh yes, okay. <laughs> I think that druid would be like a very Celtic Viking. Um, like we're the first wizards and clerics. Like it, you know, it, it, as I interpret D and D, I see that druids split off into two groups: one becoming wizards and one being clerics. In a way, because druids are the original magic in mm-hmm. my mind. Like they're just the beginning of it all. Mm-hmm. You know, they know it's kind of like a so rooted in welsh celtic and even norse mythology that they know like the secret words of things and the names of things and the old gods yeah so it's uh i've always and it's weird because druids currently i believe are like the least common class to choose in D D. really and i suspect that might have something to do with wild shape because wild shape originally in earlier editions weren't such a huge part of D D. um it was just a minor thing they could do. And then a lot of druids got built around the concept of wild shape. 
Um, cause not everyone who plays a druid wants to be shaping, you know, turning into things all the time. It's funny you bring that up because, uh, I feel like I need to use the wild shape more often, but I'm, I'm actually, I've been playing a druid, um, at a, at a home campaign for about four years now. And that druid cannot wild shape. It's a homebrew situation. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I've been playing a druid for so long that can't wild shape. I almost forget that it's an option. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a, I mean, it's handy for like exploration, but when everyone has like an, an option for exploration <laughs> in yeah. the party, right? Um, like you've got Lindra with Griff. Yeah, you and you've got Orkira who can fly. And it's it's interesting because um, also- It does make you a little bit of an inf infiltrator though. That's true. Yeah. But, but when you're in combat, if you're not Circle of the Moon, then Wild Shape kind of- I don't know it to me it's not the right choice because you yeah. know you have to use a whole action just to transform and then you got to wait around to then do stuff yeah it's not bonus action it'd be interesting if uh it was a reaction or a bonus action right yeah, which it is like, in circle of the moon yeah like to as a reaction it'd be fun because like you get hit you get hit for damage i'm like i turn into a raven yeah. <laughs> you know, like, uh, i'm out uh that would be my 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 wish for that yeah. Um, so you've got wild shape improvements. So a little tougher, tougher creatures, um, as long as they don't have a flying speed. Uh, and then like sixth level, you got land stride. So no. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. So you never have trouble. Never. I can just hop that's around. Good to know for our current campaign with all oh, the yeah. snow and everything. Like <laughs> <laughs> now that yeah, I actually kind of forgot that I had that. <laughs> yeah. So that means like even if there's a giant snow drift or a glacier or I totally, whatever. I totally just picture Legolas when he's walking. Yeah, Lego the... <laughs> every time. That's like the, it's funny that there's movies that have like the best example of like <laughs> what is that ability? Yes. As Legolas being a jerk as everyone's trying to get through the snow. <laughs> It's such a well shot moment too. I love how they just like demonstrate. Okay, the rules do not apply to. Yes, and they're just uh, so light. This elf at all. <laughs> um, it's so nonchalant. No one like brings it up. He's mm -hmm. just like, nah. <laughs> so, um, and then eighth level, another wild shape improvement, a little tougher beast. Uh, and then eight, tenth level, your nature's ward. You cannot be charmed or frightened, but by elementals or fey you are immune to poison and disease that's pretty huge yeah that also will come in handy later oh, uh, boy. <laughs> so let's uh let's go ahead, let's take a look at penelope's spells what did uh what all did you choose for known spells let's see spells i really do have to play a druid sometime oh. i'm about to play a barbarian Oh, that's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, I just need a simpler. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As you know, my current character t requires a lot. Yeah. Of being on all the time. <laughs> so. I don't know how you keep up. <laughs> um, okay. Ca caffeine. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I've, there's a lot here. There's so much. Druids get a lot. Yeah, are we going through all of them? Yeah, we're going to choose all your spells. We're doing it. Okay. It's an hour-long show. All right. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. So what kind of cantrips? Uh, uh, infestation. Uh, well, yeah, I think that, that, was, yeah. that was... Oh, yeah, that's obvious. Uh, yeah, that, I think that was the bonus, but it's weird it didn't get added here, but I think it's there. Uh, mold Earth. Such a good cantrip. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I took primal savagery. Oh man, you got it. You got to pull that out at some I point. I do. I always pictured it as like, I don't know. You just see this cute little Penelope, and all of a sudden she's like, Wah! and she like grows these like teeth big and point fingernails. acidic teeth and good fingernails. Yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, this and then is I a good thing to do. I've noticed a lot of people I've done this with. They're like, I didn't know I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, then good, good to know for next time. Um, and then I took thunderclap. Thunderclap is a very solid. Uh, yeah, it's just a good one to have all around. Especially when you're fishing. Yeah. I actually did that. As, uh, Wait, what? <laughs> as Averin actually cast Thunderclap while in a river because there were eels and leeches and he just did it. And then all these fish like 
<laughs> floated to the top See, and he's like, oh. I love that. I love seeing, really thinking outside the box with your spells. Like I know Satine Phoenix always uses this example. She had a, a player who, who uh, only, who was their first time playing and they ended up using magic missile to propel their boat. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that that's like it's the coolest very thing. outside the box yeah yes i love it uh, okay so that's it for cantrips i think uh you, know, you still have a lot more options here it looks like you still I have do? some yeah why don't do. i see them on my page you got one more option i do okay um interesting guidance. that might have to do with that bonus cantrip that popped up interesting I wonder if that ever got selected or might not have well uncle or you selected mold earth twice I mean, not Mold Earth, but Infestation twice. Maybe. I will go click Infestation, but yeah, you might want to check. Yeah. This is, I'm glad we're doing this. You might have a bonus cantrip. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Honestly, like, I, I wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be a terrible idea for every Dungeon Master to do this this with their party. Sure. Um, a little bit. You yeah, don't want to like steer anyone in a direction, but. Yeah, Shillelagh. just take your time. Is Shillelagh I... is the most, is that the most Gaelic word I've ever heard. Totally like, is. Is it Pe shillelagh has to be? It's so Irish. <laughs> I never want to use that spell because I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I think it's shillelagh. <laughs> I'm probably murdering it. Um. So now we're on to the first level spells. Right. So, is this taking from what I have prepared right now? Is that what it's doing? Yeah, it's probably showing you what you have. Well, what you have, these are the ones that you can prepare. So you know all of these. This is a druid. Druids just know yeah. all the spells, but you yeah. do have to prepare them in advance. Mm -hmm. So like on, on a given day, what do you find yourself preparing the most? Um, entangle, for sure. Entangle. And, and I'm sure that's a concentration. Yeah. Yes, it is. Famously in it, yeah. <laughs> um. I, I find myself trying to prepare things that aren't concentration as well to try to bounce it out, but there really isn't a lot. Actually, I'm looking at my list and I'm not seeing anything. Oh, wow. Uh, that's why I like to get things like Ice Knife. Like, it seems yeah. like such a, compared to all the other spells that Druids have, it doesn't seem like that great of a thing, but it's a not, it's not a concentration spell, so. No, <laughs> no, it, it, it does decent damage and it affects, you know, a bunch of creatures around it as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, Ice Knife is pretty cool and I like the visual of it uh did you ever take heal do you take healing word i i don't usually i'll take healing spirit because i think i think healing spirit's like a bonus action but um healing word is i i just leave the healing to orkira so i usually don't yeah she's doing a lot stuff. uh it is a bonus action wow they're both they're both bonus actions are they really yeah healing word's a bonus action I oh believe. my goodness yeah it's a good like yep bonus action well, cool. I'm learning so much today, guys. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else do we have for first level spells? Uh, I don't have anything prepared besides that. I think I hopped away from first level after okay. that. Okay. Jumped into second. Yeah. So bark skin is always prepared. So that's a given. Um, I love using flaming sphere. Flaming sphere is pretty cool I, mm -hmm. flame. I haven't used that in a day um, oh yeah you just got you got a weapon on the battlefield that you can use as a bonus action yeah it's almost like spiritual weapon that fact but it's still a con it's still concentration it takes a full action to cast mm -hmm. so it's not quite spiritual weapon in that sense um i love having heat metal ready because you can use it outside of combat yeah you, depending on how your dm likes to you know let you use it <laughs> it's very true that's a really powerful spell that is underutilized yeah that's a um that's a that's definitely a smart player spell to uh mm -hmm. i'm always looking at like our our bad guys and one of the first things i think is are they wearing metal are right. they in, in a breastplate or something right and, and in very hmm, boy you're right I, I i do throw a lot of weird <laughs> things at you yeah yeah and not a lot of them are in metal. <laughs> and if there are in metal, you're surrounded by, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> by troops. <laughs> it's true. You're in the middle of a city, so it's just like low profile, guys. Uh, let's see. Um, right. Okay, I pass without trace is a given. 
it's so good. And also, Avrin casts this religiously now. Oh yeah. Stealth. I you know I didn't I had forgotten about Pass Without Trace. Plus ten to stealth. I mean that's crazy. Yeah, trickery domain clerks get too. I'm just like plus ten. <laughs> yeah. Why be a rogue? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just gonna do this. Yeah. For everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a fantastic spell. Um, Especially when you got someone who's a clunker like Briv. Mm-hmm. You know, you need like I imagine uh, pass without pass without trace just kind of mutes him a little bit while he's talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, spider climb is always prepared, um, and then we're into third level. Spider climb is so fun. I love it. It is. I, I love spidery things actually quite a bit, even though I hate spiders myself. Yeah. But um, again, it's a concentration spell. So if you wanted to do something cool, like run up a wall and then yeah, cast firebolt, you know. I feel, you like, I feel like I wouldn't say no to spider climb not being concentration. Right. I mean, it's it makes not sense. that powerful. Yeah. Um, yes. Not like it does damage or anything. No. I mean, like and, flying, I get it. Because you're already like you're blasting people from above. Yeah. Um, but like if you're on a tower, like they're they can knock the tower down. And the same thing goes for bark skin. Uh, bark skin is a concentration spell, so I really never see a point in doing it because yeah, it takes away like so many options for you when you actually want to fight. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of management here. Yeah. Um, call lightning is always prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, I have daylight prepared. Daylight is very strong. Yeah. Um, it, it's I mean, strong it's not and it's strong, not. But, yeah. But, but it's, I mean, it it can destroy magical darkness. Um, mm -hmm. That's a super big deal. I might well, keep that one prepared while we go into Ravenloft. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, like, yeah. Uh, lots of things don't like the light. Um, <laughs> I've got Erupting Earth. I love Erupting Earth. Erupting Earth, Earth is just... Awesome. So Actually, WizKids ass. sent me the minis for it, and I'm like, yay, this makes Erupting Earth even more fun because I got like <laughs> little, like, I can put up my little pillars of like, yeah. like, it, and it's a lot of damage. And it's yeah. not, it's not concentration, it just kind of happens, mm -hmm. um, which is really lovely. Uh, yeah, it's okay. straight up damage, right? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. make it difficult terrain. It does, actually. Oh, it does. Matter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yeah, the area yep. becomes different. That is right? fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. I mean, yeah, I that's hope. a great blasting spell, and then mm -hmm. that's permanent. You don't have to worry about it. And we did this once in the show where, you know, you if you have a fighter or a paladin or something, and you're like, first, cast freedom of movement on them, right. then then destroy the terrain so that they can still get in there and fight. Uh, that was, like, the first time I think the, the heroes ever came together and, yes. like, just destroyed, <laughs> like, like, because I threw so many three giants at you. yeah yeah it was just like one at, they just fell like no you, bro you, no you, bro <laughs> you, you molded earth for like a ditch as well yeah, so bro fun. no I'm I'm good bro I'm good bro oh bro I'm not though <laughs> oh my god it was so funny <laughs> oh, was um, fun. okay where are we uh I have plant growth is that always prepared? always prepared oh, yeah. okay I was about to say it's like I don't remember um speak with plants that one also always prepared. That is another, I got to say, underutilized. Yeah. I would always use this. And and I think, boy, it reminds me of, and this is not, this is very weird. This is a deep dive. Okay, Labyrinth. Do you remember when she meets uh, the caterpillar, which I have a stuffed version of, by the way. Mm. So there's, there's this lovely British caterpillar with a little scarf um, that she runs into in the labyrinth. But there's also all these weird plants that have like eyes. And it's just this very Jim Henson-y moment. But think about all the things that plants have seen. Yeah. Like if you're talking to moss or <laughs> vines. As you do. Near a door. Think about what you could find out. Like It's true. Uh, it's true. I don't think I use this one at all because we're never really... It's very rare for us to be in like a very grassy or foresty kind of place. It is also one of those things where you have to do, you do have to ask the DM. Is there any kind of like growth? Is there yeah. moss? Is there mold? Is there algae? Like that's because they may not be doing that in their description. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a good one to remember, to remember that you have. 
so yeah, you, you can question the plants about events in the spells area within the past day, gaining information about creatures that have passed by, the weather, <laughs> uh, and other circumstances. <laughs> I like the one. I just like the, the how was the weather? <laughs> such a passive thing to ask yes. a plant. A Penelope would though. Yeah, it is an important factor in their life. Like, you get to you get to ask this plant one thing. And say, how's the weather? You hey, how also, you doing? Yeah, yeah, how you doing? You can also turn difficult terrain caused by plant growth, like thickets and undergrowth, into ordinary terrain Whoa. that lasts for the duration. Or you can turn ordinary terrain where plants are present into difficult terrain that lasts for the duration of the spell. The spell lasts for 10 minutes. Okay. That Causing cool. vines and branches to hinder pursuers. For example, um, plants might be able to perform other tasks on your behalf at the GM's discretion. It's interesting that it says the GM. Huh. I've never seen the word GM. Wait. Yeah. In 5th edition. That's interesting. Wow. Uh, instead of DM. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's always that way now. I don't recall it. That's strange. I, yeah, like I should know being who it's I typo. am. typo. <laughs> uh, the spell doesn't enable plants to uproot themselves or move about, but they can freely move branches and tendrils and stalks. That's fun because that's that's you having a little bit of a conversation with your DM. Like if I convince vines to like wrap around someone a little bit or like be a little bit of a pain or be spooky. <laughs> right? Ooh, when I think about that tricksterness, I should I mean, because plants can move. Yeah. I mean, they, they follow the sun very slowly, but I mean, they have the capacity for movement, so... Um, that is awesome. That is, you're right. You got to get creative with this kind of spell. I love it. Yeah, this is a, uh, that, that's one of those things where you can have a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Tidal wave is interesting. Uh, that's actually what I have prepared. Yeah. Tidal wave is one of my favorite spells. You have no idea how often I use it in my other druid game. It It's a hilarious spell. Uh, because it's another good blaster, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this is like, and boy, druids just bludgeon things to death, don't they? Everything's <laughs> bludgeoning with them, yes. But it, it comes with the cost of like, where yeah. are where's your party before you do this tidal wave? Where's your party? <laughs> yeah, it's almost, um, you have so much great power, great responsibility. <laughs> I think of us to play a druid, I would uh get the alertness feat. I believe that gives you like a plus four to your or five even to initiative. Like I would Whoa. be focused up on trying to be the one who goes first oh, and nice. kind of controlling like, or having that party discussion of, Hey, let me go first. Um, it'd be interesting if we're allowed to trade initiative with people, but, oh. but uh, I don't know if the rules, I don't know if that would really work, but yeah, I would definitely choose, I think alertness and then a high dexterity score. And then you'd be like, Wow, that's a yeah. good idea. That way, you would always be like just blasting stuff out of the way, and then you're yeah. like, "Okay, now do your thing." I've made the, uh, I, you know, <laughs> I've cleaned up half the battlefield for you <laughs> before you rush in. Uh, Freely is a good example of this. Freely rushes into everything, and that basically means you can't do any area of effect spells <laughs> at all. Uh, you know, any character who rushes in um, yeah. uh, can well get destroyed. So, but yeah, it's great. And everyone gets prone. So if you got rogues in the party, it's just like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> uh, and it's a hell of a surprise indoors. So. Yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> well, all it takes is a drop of water, if I'm, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, and I love the idea of just a tidal wave in a room is yeah. so weird. <laughs> I usually love to do the thing where, where you wipe up your sweat and you just flick it away and it just erupts into a tidal wave. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want to be dark and creepy, you can flavor it like The Shining, where it's just like red water. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like really mess with somebody. I like that. Uh, that makes that was... me think back to that time you let us, uh, you let me cast water breathing on blood. <laughs> that was so gross. <laughs> the elemental plane of blood I invented. Ugh. What is wrong with me? <laughs> nothing oh, that was like one of your worst nemesis ever <laughs> that was that was but i loved it red caps man red caps are the worst uh especially a red cap that comes out of a god <laughs> oh yeah that's the, that was the whole idea <sighs> boy we are a complicated show um <laughs> yeah i always um, thought that was fun yeah so now we're into fourth level spells 
Uh, is conjure woodland beings? Is that always prepared? It is not. Oh, I have it prepared. It's interesting. A conjure elemental, an elemental and conjure woodland beings. I've always wanted to use, but it's complicated because you have to take an action to do it, and then mm-hmm. you have to keep track, and it just adds to the party. So sometimes it could bog down, mm-hmm. you know, fighting. Mm-hmm. So I tend not to use it. Yeah, it, it is a lot. I mean, like it is one of those things where you kind of have to like, okay, if I'm going to use this spell, I would re- really recommend um, adding that as a pet. In, mm. There's a side thing on your character sheet, so I have that ready. I love controlling monsters. I know in the variance rules, they've got a whole bunch of extra things you can conjure, and they have very specific types of creatures that are kind of like universal. That kind of like uncomplicate this a little bit, so you don't have to be thinking like these are the fake creatures I, I summoned. Mm-hmm. I do like that they also kind of dissipate, and I don't have to feel too guilty if they die. Um, <laughs> but I mean, this is interesting. You can summon blink dogs, sprites, satyrs, mm-hmm. dryads, a I sea hag. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty interesting. That is holy crap! A CR two. Wow. I got to think about using that sometime. Let's go put pin in this spell, actually. And let's, this is like a good opportunity to add things. Like they're not in your, your character sheet all the time, but like at least you can just like look over and see, oh, there's what a sea hag is. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. Let's see. Blink. You know what? I'm going to just remember. Those are the monsters. And do I have any notes? I have a sticky note. I do like sticky notes. Mm-hmm. Okay. What else other than that? So divination's always prepared. Freedom of movement, I'm guessing, is always prepared. Yep. And commune with nature. And then we're into fifth level insect plague. <laughs> commune with nature, what level is that? Fifth. Oh, that's fifth. Okay, okay, okay. Um so you skipped over Polymorph, Ice Storm? Well, Polymorph, you know, Alindra has that one. So uh, she tends to use that, and uh, I dig it. If I'm going to ch- change into something, it'll be a wild shape. So. Mm. Okay, so why? Okay, there it is. Yeah, Commune with Nature is always prepared. So what else okay. do we got here? Insect Plague. Yeah. I love that one. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> that saved the day. It's 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 pretty awesome, and I love that you know Penelope is is cute and she's all about flowers, but she's also all about bugs. You know, she <laughs> loves her bugs. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty pretty powerful. And then mask cure wounds. Mask cure wounds. I am waiting for you to, and I think you're out. Yep. And then tree stride is always always prepared. Yep. Um I am waiting for the day someone gets reincarnated. Oh, really? Because <laughs> the hilarity of having to become a, like a different race entirely oh. in D&D, right? Like, you know, because um, you have to roll on this table. Oh, my goodness. I mean, how funny if one of the characters dies, right? I don't know. I, I know Lauren's in chat. Does Orkira have reincarnate? No, it is a druid spell. Is it really? Yeah. So, so she has like raised dead. Okay. But. Wow. I'm. I, I don't know what the spell components are, and I don't know if there are. uh, Okay, you do need rare oils, and I've never seen this word. Unguents? Unguents? Unguents. Unguents, worth at least 1,000 gold pieces, which the spell, like, absorbs. But that sounds a little little bit easier to get a hold of than necessarily diamonds. Yeah, Um, but we have tons of diamonds. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, wait for it. Um, so, <laughs> but can you imagine? Like, I mean, I'd feel terrible. It'd be oh. so, such a weird identity thing for Orkira to suddenly become like a tiefling, <laughs> you know, like or a. Rock I would feel elf. bad about having someone having to change their character, though. But I guess if they died, if they're dead, then it really depends on the character, right? Like, because I feel like Orkira is very tied to being a dragonborn. Like, sure, oh, that, that's a big part of her identity. Um, I feel like you know, like. TJ and Keen would roll with it. Yeah. Right? Like it yeah. would be pretty hilarious. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, you know, even Briv, you know, yeah, I can temporarily see... being a gnome would just be like, <laughs> very, very, oh no, Briv so is the gnome. 
get was... him a little tiny piece of armor made out of his helmet. <laughs> <laughs> so un unguent, unguent is a soft, greasy substance used as ointment or lubrication. Okay, so like a lot of the beard oil that I just purchased on. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> a thousand gold pieces worth. A thousand gold pieces worth of. Beard Let me just oil. carry that around. I'll be ready. You know how I've got a thousand dollars worth of. Well, I mean, there's certain like fixidents that are extremely expensive. So I guess. Like, yeah. So if you're into the weird history of perfume. Um, <laughs> So that's pretty solid. All of stone is also one of those interesting ones. If you have time to spend in a place, if you keep casting it, that becomes permanent. Yeah, it's pretty epic. There are uh, so many epic things. You know, I don't think druids get enough credit. I really don't. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I'm addicted. They're so much fun. They're and so they, powerful. <laughs> there's a lot of flavor there. And, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to argue. No matter if you're evil or good, you're kind of on the right side. Yep. And it's something I've been having a lot of discussions about. Um, this is again why I like trickery domain. Like all clerics are like, I'm going to heal you. I believe in blah, 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 or philosophy and I'm going to heal you with some divine energy. And they're, 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 they're almost all altruistic. I have trouble saying certain words. Uh, they're almost always trying to help you. Trickery domain is fun because you can be a jerk. And that's what's scary about clerics is like, especially the trickery domain, like you can be a complete jerk and not want to do it and still heal people and kind of shove it in their face. <laughs> no matter what evil thing a druid does, they're still a druid. They're still on the side of nature. Like they're not like trying to destroy the world <laughs> necessarily. They may be trying to destroy your world. Yeah, they're uh, very, they're neutral. They're, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are a force of nature. And so there's something like you could get away with a lot. And, and it, yeah, sorry. And, and and on that note is, is you know, you can have the flowers and prettiness and nature, or you can have the wrath of nature, Druid, the one that will bring down the sea upon you. Yeah. You know, and it's so great, that dynamic. Yeah. I mean, Aquaman has to be like a little bit of Druid, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, the bro Druid would be pretty amazing. <laughs> Just a surfer too. <laughs> Any surfer I've ever known on the Oregon coast. Uh, <laughs> it's calling out the Oregon coast right now. What kind of background do you have? Uh, she is a Outlander. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Yep. All right, let's go and look at that. So Outlander, you grew up far away from civilization. You get athletics. That's pretty great, actually, because you. Yeah, uh, using. Oh, we lost him. Ah, uh, he'll be back. Um, you yeah, I'll, so you're definitely a recluse. You're back. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go go and uh, yes, I know my internet connection is unstable. Thank you for the notification. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So describe this to me. Um, you know, growing up in the wilds, the uh, wilds are in your blood. You you know, you're you're an explorer. That was something that Penelope was she was outcast in her village nobody liked her because she was so dumb they would just make fun of her and she didn't have any real friends that's why she's so adamant about making friends mm. um Aww. so yeah it's so kind of a sad backstory but um she spent a lot of time in the woods and she found that you know that's where she was happiest was making friends with the trees you know they were the ones that would listen no one else would listen to her what I do like about backgrounds is you do get like an ability and I think this is lost almost every time because they describe what you get and then you get athletics as a skill. What, mm -hmm. what was your other skill that you got to choose here? I did animal handling. Okay. Yeah. Cause you've mm -hmm. definitely done that. Yeah. Musical instrument. I don't okay. know why everyone gets a musical instrument in D and D <laughs> it paralyzes you know. me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I chose drums because can you picture a little Penelope with like a like drummer boy kind of thing? That's perfect. Uh, and then she knows Sylvan. Oh, of course. Yeah. Awesome. She she wants to talk with the dryad. She I, I think it, maybe she even learned it from Keen or something. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> as a background. Now, the Wanderer is great as a background because you have an excellent memory. And this is why I feel like everyone needs to look at the backgrounds and see these really cool things. This is why I choose pirate for stuff all the time. Uh, but 
The Wanderer, you have an excellent memory for maps and geography, and you can always recall the general layout of terrain, settlements, and other features around you. In addition, you can find food, fresh water for yourself, up to five other people each day, provided the land offers berries, small game, water, or so forth. That is insanely powerful because that works in Avernus. That works, you know, any anywhere you go, you're going to be able to determine if something is edible. That's like a huge ability to have. I wish it was used more of like, you know, if, if the party is lost or something to, to know that the druid knows or that the wanderer will be able to determine where we've been like, oh, mountains were north or whatever. Right. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, this is another thing that DMs should take note. Look at look at the background features that the characters have and then create opportunity with adversity. Yeah. So, I mean, that's all d d is. Otherwise, <laughs> I mean, I know everyone has like horrible PTSD and Beyond Heroes because of everything they've gone through. <laughs> 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 but, and they haven't had a lot of breaks, but um, it is interesting. It'd be interesting to see what they do with two weeks off. Yeah. <laughs> So you've got a staff of the woodlands. Yes. I which love it. Was gifted to you by a dryad like creature. Staff of flowers. Staff of lots of staves. Yep. Okay. And that's super powerful for a druid as well. Oh, so that yeah. allows you to cast animal friendship extra awaken. Wall of thorns. Wall of Thorns, where you turned a giant purple worm into to butter. <laughs> that was inspired. I love it. It was so much fun. No way was it going to like, and it's like, it's like a, what was it, a dexterity saving throw or something? I'm like, yeah. no, it doesn't make it. It's a, <laughs> like, it's not going to stop on a dime. And I love that that was, um, I love the digital dice set so much and it's made my life so easy, but this was before that. And it was, yeah. it was like 15 D eight damage or something like twice. It was like, yeah. or something. And it was just so huge and, and just getting to roll all that dice felt so powerful. Being able to like, yeah, being able to, to, to just uh, not have to worry about math. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's, the best it's a part. gameplay in a big way. <laughs> um it, it it's right up there with like making being a good player and being on deck is uh mm -hmm. being on deck is a big thing about being a player is like knowing what you're gonna do once it's your turn is pre you pretty know, huge the first time i ever learned i know it's it just totally makes sense but i didn't even think about it until i was playing a game with luke gygax and watching him roll for the hit but also roll damage at the same time i was just like gosh he's just such a great player like what an what an easy thing to do to really help speed along the game or not yeah. bog it down by just roll your damage while you roll your attack it's just i've even done it ahead of time like right when it's my turn i'm like okay this is my intention i got it uh, you know, i like doing it in the moment more mm -hmm. so i think i would tend towards i would like roll damage and then try yeah uh, that's a smart even. thing to do yeah. yeah like but that's a good point like I, I would love that's a good panel of like how to speed up your gameplay that's a good yeah article that like, is a good one good little tiny practices that yeah. will move things along yeah that's good especially when you're streaming yes um you had a cloak of protection but you gave it away and this I... is one of my favorite moments of penelope's ever and this is a very important thing you don't have to do the optimal thing for your character you gave mm -hmm. away a, like a very good magical item to save a family that's amazing didn't even think twice really she she wouldn't that was lovely that was oh. one of my very favorite moments in the oh, whole thank show you. actually thank you thank you everyone tried to stop you too i'm like no, 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 no. that's, <laughs> that's <not> right <laughs> uh, that's your key magical item is the staff of the woodlands yes. that you've had mm -hmm. pretty powerful weapon but it also has a lot of overlap with what you already can do so it's not like it's OP in the hands of anyone else, in the, in the, but well, I think only druids and certain clerics can use it. Yeah. Um, and wait, are you wearing armor? No. No. I armor. don't think so. I think I have, nope, just light armor. I'm wearing leather armor. Okay, you are wearing leather armor. Though. Yeah. Okay. That's the thing about druids is they, if I believe I'm correct, they can't wear metal armor that might be correct it's so hard i have so many editions of dnd stuck yeah. stuck in my brain yeah uh i'm gonna move you here so yeah definitely a blaster yep 
I got my ice. <gasps> oh, oh I want Yeah, use that. The ice ones are great. I love the ice ones. How do you change your dice? I don't know how to do that. I will show you. You go to collections. Uh-huh. You see my dice. Hopefully oh. Hopefully I'm not breaking any NDAs by showing. Okay, yeah. This, this. <laughs> oh my gosh, how cool is that? Yeah, so you can choose like any of the pigment dice, which are cool, old school. You got the, the legendary dice. Oh. And, uh, right now I'm using the glacial dice. Um, that is so cool. And you can even uh, adjust the volume, I believe, um, on those. And then we're going to go back to my characters and we're going to do a little bit more work on Penelope and Um just 18 copies of Avern for every stream I join. <laughs> it's a character that's gone away from me. Uh, <laughs> it's a creature of his own right now. Uh, you'd be very much so. Even if I wanted to not play him at this point. Um, but also a character that you have to constantly be on. It's kind of exhausting. Sometimes you just want <laughs> <laughs> You just want to be that dumb barbarian. Yes, I'm excited don't, for you. <laughs> please don't expect so much of me. Uh, so we're going to add leather armor real quick. And I want to make sure we get this one thing done before armor. So it's pretty hard, easy. Mm-hmm. It's cool, like smolder. I love smoldering armor. <laughs> I think it's just always kind of a cool thing to do. Inventory, so use, use. I gotta wear that. Oh, I put too much on there. I think I have to attune to something. Yep, Staff of Woodlands. Okay, that's attuned. We go to your character sheet. And very specifically, I'm gonna move this over here. And we got so we know blink dogs. That's that's on the table. So I think we got notes, allies, backstory, other. Do does anyone remember manage extras? Not really giving me. Hmm. Okay. okay. Familiar beast companion mount summoned. Okay, so add extra summon. So blink dog. Oh snap! So we add blink dog. What else? Can you go look at uh the the summon fay or it, summon woodland beings again? Yeah. What do you, th someone's asking in chat what I think of the old no metal rule. I think it's a little weird. I think because metal's naturally occurring, but I get it. Um, I don't feel like druids need more restrictions. Uh, this is why I kind of like, I love, if I, my favorite paladin, if I would ever play a paladin is Oath of Ancients. Because again, it kind of like connects with that um, old world. Uh, I just imagine a paladin covered in vines. And I, I don't imagine, you know, like, even in their beard, like their beard has moss growing in it. Yeah, like think about like a, a Warforged Druid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the idea of just like, because they're also partially made of wood. I mean, like, what if you're not a Warforged, really? You're, you came out of the wood, the, the, the earth itself somehow. Yeah. That's fun. Like a woad. I would totally play a woad. Woads are the <laughs> coolest. Uh, okay. So we know sprites. Yep. So I'm going to add sprite here. What else? Seder. Seder. So this is like, I think this this really helps me, especially because I used to love summoning things. Yeah, I I had never done this. This is great. And what else? A uh, dryad. And a dryad. And that's what you can currently cast or? Yep. Okay. And how Okay, anything else? A uh, sea hag. And a sea hag. Are you at the level where you can summon a sea hag? I think so. Oh my god, imagine if you're summoning the sea hag. <laughs> <laughs> like somehow you own her now. Like, like you can just summon her up again. Oh my gosh. It's part of like some horrible thing. Now, uh, the other thing I would do, well, no, you don't really need to do it, but you can even include like how many of them there are to remind you. So, um, let me manage extras. How many could you summon of blink dogs right now for Penelope? Uh, summon creature. Uh, four, I think. It's a half half CR. 
Oh, okay. It doesn't give me the option to add multiples, I think. It says, okay, well, let's see. So you could summon up to four blink dogs right now. Yeah. All right. So let's, I mean, if you really want to keep track of this. Wow. I would just shove four of them. I got away from here. Uh, so f I would just shove four of them in there. And we'll, then what's the next thing? How many can you summon of them? Um, what do we have next? A dryad. Let me see. The satyr, I can do four. You can do four satyrs. So certainly you're gonna have to scroll a little bit. Two, three. Okay, that's four. All right. I can do two two dryads. Two dryads. This is just what I would do because this would help me. So another dryad, yeah. and and just one sea hag. One sea hag. So now under extras, uh, right here on your tab, you got actions, spells, equipment, extras. I know I'm gonna cast woodland creatures, and now I can kind of see. Okay. Oh yeah, we didn't do sprites. I oh, imagine yeah. four sprites. I, yeah. I, I'd expect. So I'll go up here in order to choose summoned and sprite and add three more. And this is just my how my brain works because I'm very bad about keeping track of stuff. So I could be like, okay, I summoned four sprites. And then I just click here and Wow. There are their stats. This is awesome. I didn't I didn't know you could do this. This is so exciting. <laughs> and if you summon one sea hag, got this. And like then what I love about it is like when you do it, like it sea hags have a horrific appearance. Like they've got these little special abilities. They have a death glare. Oh my goodness. Like there's like oh. legit abilities that are like really important. Um satyrs are interesting because that's not a playable race. Uh and they're magic resistant. So wow. if you're fighting a wizard, you summon about like four satyrs. Wow. Right? Um, and then Dryad has magic resistance as well. They can speak to beasts and plants. They have tree strides. So now you've got like two Dryads bouncing in and out of combat. That's so cool. And the Blink Dogs can teleport. Yeah. And if you got four of those running around, that's like a lot of like, uh, this is like a testament to just how Druids can handle the entire battlefield by themselves <laughs> um in fact sometimes druids are probably more successful without a party uh, if there's any like if there's any like class in D, &D i say druids are the ones that could solo the most it's right? great yes all right well thank you so much for building penelope half pint what do you love about this character well like what what has the journey been like for you um watching penelope grow has been amazing she's grown but she hasn't changed too much you know she still has that that heart about her that you know keeps her innocent keeps her wondering and and um i think the best thing is, you know, as she, she grows as a person, her power grows as well. And, and watching this tiny little halfling uh, deal so much damage and just destroy a, a field of terrain. It's just like, it's the best. That is a great arc because you like your spells start out small and then it's like increasingly like you just kill the purple world. <laughs> you, know, like, you don't see it coming. Yeah. Uh, what I also like is like everyone assumes I mean, when you agreed to play Saranthus for several episodes, that was just amazing. And you're the one who figured out the what's like everyone doesn't. I think a lot of people didn't realize at that moment. You're the one who figured out how to destroy a magical item because you you figured out that you you are technically a god. Yes. So God's like anti magic shell doesn't apply to you. Yes. Um, or your spells trump you know magical items, and it was like fantastic. It was like, yeah, really, that was so fun. People to figure out yeah so I, I love watching the faces of shock horror and even upset dude i can't believe like adam adam was just he's like I'm act i was like i'm actually kind of mad yeah. <laughs> i felt so bad it, it, <laughs> i like trickery plots but you you acted it so well and yeah. going back and watching it it's so obvious you're saranthus or something <laughs> other right Right. Um, the, the, because you're acting a little odd and like no like increasingly no one's going to trust you to do that again <laughs> and we did, certainly ran into a fake Penelope but like you know the, yeah. the, 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 the jig was up pretty quick <laughs> um, 
but you've always been a fantastic role player and oh. penelope is like definitely the heart of the party yes thank uh, you and uh it's always been good role playing with you so yes thank you for, always for having me i love it so much yeah thank you i i love penelope half here's your uh woodling woodland army wow <laughs> all wow. ready to go for you it's awesome <laughs> uh it's a it's a fantastic character and i recommend everyone play a druid so. yes please they're so much fun and we will both see you on Beyond Heroes next Wednesday. Yay. Okay. Bye, everyone.